Ready for Vlogmas. Fiber friends, what is up? Um, so welcome to a very starlight Vlogmas is what I think I'm calling this. I have no idea what I'm doing or why I'm doing it or why I'm committing to this thing. And I have no idea what's happening. We're going to see. This is going to be a giant experiment. We're going to see what's happening. But for now, we're calling it a very starlight Vlogmas. So I had this idea. I have terrible insomnia. I don't sleep. Sleep is overrated. And like literally last night I had like a fever dream and I was like, hmm, what if while I spun my nest fiber advent, I popped on here every other day because there's 12 days. I popped on here every other day. We chit chatted about something spinning or sheep or whatever related. Probably not going to be holiday related, but we chit chat about something spinning or sheep or whatever related. And I show you the fiber that I'm spinning and then we make yarn together um i i couldn't do a traditional vlogmas my life is one very boring two protected by hipaa because i work in nursing and like you can't follow me around during my day because my day is protected and then when i get home i don't do anything besides play video games spin or knit yeah so we're gonna do the spinning part together um i am a morning person so i was thinking i would do these spinning style videos first thing in the morning so you might catch me in my pajamas a few times i might be in a fluffy bathrobe a few times this is going to be super casual and super informal um i did do some prep work and i made a list of 12 topics that we could talk about while we're spinning while we make yarn um and i can't imagine these will be very long and we will do the thing that's it this is gonna be super casual no plans it's just a place for you and i to hang out I should tell you who I am. Hi, I'm not a good podcaster. I don't know how to do this. My name is Tashiana, but you can call me Tashi because we're friends now. You can find me on Instagram at Tangles and Starlight because that was like the comment I got the most was like, we don't know where to find you on Instagram. And I'm like, can you tell that I'm a noob? You can find me on Instagram at Tangles and Starlight and you can find me on Ravelry at Tangled Starlight. Ravelry did not let me have Stitches and Starlight or Tangles and Starlight. Ravelry is a hater. Um, so it's Tangled Starlight, but all that stuff will be linked in the description box below. I live in Brooklyn with my husband and our two hell kittens, and this is Vlogmas. So I have the 12 day advent from Nest Fiber. Um, I have no idea what's in this. I'm very excited about this. I have no idea what's in this though. Um, and my plan is to spin a three ply fractal. So I'm going to spin four ounces to each bobbin and I'm going to spin one bobbin splitting the braid lengthwise four times, one bobbin splitting the braid lengthwise twice, and then one bobbin straight down, and that'll give me the fractal. So it'll be a one, two, four fractal. It'll give me 12 ounces of three ply yarn, and then I might use it all in one project. I might use it all in separate projects. The world is my oyster, but I'll have yarn. Um, you guys, you just have to look at how cute this package is. Like, look at all these. Look at this. There's a little bear. This package is just delightful. So I, it came yesterday, today's December 1st. It came yesterday, I have conveniently fit them into this basket. I'm gonna leave this basket by my wheel and pick up a bundle every day and spin. I have no idea. This is gonna be fun for a few reasons. One, I have no idea how to film myself spinning. That's gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna mess with camera angles. You might see my hands and not my face. I have no idea how to do this. Two, the other thing that's gonna be fun about this is, um, I don't know if I can spin and talk, so I might get sidetracked. It's, y'all, we're going on an adventure. I hope you're ready for the adventure. So I've picked the things that I'm gonna talk about from a few things based on like some comments that I've gotten. I've gotten a few questions that have just popped up over and over. Um, I also like pulled Instagram for like Q and A type things. And some of the questions were questions I could answer in like five minutes. And some of the questions are things that I just wanna talk about forever and ever. So that's what we're doing. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I have no idea. How I'm gonna fill myself. The, the, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this. Now, my this does say 13, and this says 13 because um, Jen at Nest Fiber had a 12 day advent and a 24 day advent. And so, if you got the 12 day, it was number 13 to 24. I could renumber these, but I know that 13 is gonna correspond to day one, and I'm going to open them every other day. Um, so, I'm spinning the 12 ounces all December long. But I have waited long enough. Let's see what's in this. This is my happy dance. If you, oh my God, you should see me open presents. I'm, I'm outrageous, but it's present time. Okay, 
So we'll see. So I did the Valentine's Day advent and it was a bunch of different fibers and it was a really cool color story. So let's see what this is. So for the first day, um, so the fiber is, what's in this? This is Polworth Pineapple and Silk. So here we go. Here's a tag. There we go. That kind of focus. It did not focus. I still have not figured out what to do with whites. We're gonna have to figure this out, but it's Poe with pineapple and silk. And you guys, this is kind of scrumptious. This is, who these are my colors. All right. I don't know the best way to show this to you. So I'm just gonna wrap this up around my hand and then just hold it up. That's beautiful. So I think the first bobbin I'm gonna do is the bobbin where I split it in half. So I'm literally just gonna be a savage, split this right down the middle and we're gonna spin, and then we're gonna chat. So I think I'm gonna do my Vlogmas spins on my Spin Illusion Bullfrog. Um, my Lendrum has a big fleece spin on it right now, and so it would just be easier for me to do this. And there, until I practice, there's realistically no way for me to figure out how to feel myself spinning, and you can see my hands and see my face. So. You guys aren't here for my face anyway. You're here for my hands, right? So we're just going to do it like this. I'm going to get myself situated. My wheel had zero tension on it because I haven't been spinning on it and I keep it with zero tension. So let's, let's just see how this goes. That feels good. And then I'm spinning on a ratio of 18 to 1. I'm just going to spin my default yarn. I'm going to spin my default yarn. And then we're going to three-ply it and we'll see what happens. All right, so we are off. My tension is a little too high, so I'm gonna back this down a ton because this is just stealing the fiber out of my hand. We are off to the races. I'm spinning this with a short forward draft, which is, that is still too high. It is literally kidnapping this. It is like, ooh, okay. Um, so tension, I think, is one of those things that is very, like, personal. I don't like a lot of tension on my wheel when I'm spinning. I like just enough tension that it's loading onto the bobbin, but I don't want to feel like I'm dueling my wheel for a fiber. Um, so I just, I'm actually going to back it down a little bit more. I like it just enough. So I, I got a little overzealous. What I should have started with was, was with like zero tension and then go. You can see that I'm like getting less and less articulate as we go <laughs> because spinning and talking is not something that I normally do. Like I occasionally have conversations with Joshua, but like spinning and talking is not something that I do. But I've, I think I've hit my stride and we can chit chat. So what we're talking about today, we are gonna talk about my favorite sheet breeds for spinning uh, from the fleece. Someone asked me this the other day and I was like, that is a good question because I am, <sighs> I am a creature, this is still too high. I'm gonna take that all the way off. I am a creature of habit in a lot of ways. Like I like what I like, but I also like to experiment. So I like to say that there's not a sheep breed that I've met that I cannot find some use for. I know that there are a lot of things that are like not really next to skin, are not great for knitting, but just cause it's not great for knitting. Sorry, so here we go. I started talking and lost track of my twist and I'm doing the thing where you start spinning down the side. And I find that if you start spinning down the side of something, I just break it, join it, and keep going. Um, so yeah, not everything's gonna be great for knitting. There are a lot of sheep that make good rug yarn, but I don't make rugs. And there's a lot of sheep that make good yarn for weaving, but I don't weave. Um, so I tend to prefer the sheep breeds that are gonna make good uh, knitting yarn, because that's just, that's what I do with my fiber. Um, and I have tried a lot. Uh, and I keep coming back to a few of them. So I've learned what makes my heart sing. I've learned what I enjoy playing with. I have, I find value in every experience, but there's just some experiences that are a little bit more valuable than others. You can see I'm starting to hit my stride now. Uh, less, I'm a little bit less, uh, discombobulated. I also have not spun short forward in 
months, like literally months. Everything that I've spun since it started cooling down has been wool and spun yarns. So getting back to short forward and remembering how to do it and remembering how to control the twist and all that stuff was getting a little bit away from me, but we got it, we're going, we're zooming. So the moment you've all been waiting for. I This list is not in any particular order. It, it, it would be silly for me to try to figure out what my favorite sheep breed is, but I can tell you what my top five is. So, uh, number one that we're going to talk about is I love a Romney. This might surprise nobody because my first fleece was... Okay, so caveat. We're talking about my favorite sheep to spin from raw. Ooh, there's a There's a... The thing about spinning blends that have silk in it is sometimes if the silk isn't blended enough, then you get those fun slubs and then ugh, I had to pull that out. These are my favorite things to spin from raw. There is nothing, you can't compare a Romney that you process yourself to like commercially available Romney. And that's because the processes that they put um, wool through to make it into commercially like available top is not the same thing as something you would do like if you're processing it on your own, there's no way. You're way more gentle. There's no comparison. So we're talking about things to spin from fleece because I'm sure I've had Romney top that like made me swear off of Romney forever. And then I had a Romney fleece and I was like, oh, this is completely different. So that's what we're talking about. Things from the fleece. So Romney, I love a good Romney. I prefer to spin medium wools over fine. I also am very rough. I don't want to sit there and like comb. I mean, I, I mean, there's, listen, there's time and place for combing, but I am also very, I'm a chaos gremlin. The chaos gremlin in the back of my head demands to be fed and it does not have time to be like combing locks all day. And I love Romney because I can do both. I can throw Romney on my carter. I like that it doesn't pill. It's just a delight to spin. I can spin it straight from the lock. I mean, listen, you can spin anything straight from the lock, but there's just something, it has such good luster. Like when Romney catches the light, it's just, it's beautiful. It like, the skies open up and the heavens start singing and it's just, it's just a delightful day. And so yeah, of course Romney's gonna be on the list. I have a Romney that I'm currently processing. I will try to remember to put a picture in here. Her name is Hawaii. And she's a champagne Romney. And I flicked open a few of her locks the other day just because I was bored and held it up to catch the sunlight coming in my bedroom. And I was just, I was mesmerized. Like, I don't know. If you've never had a Romney fleece before, I highly recommend it. It's a really good beginner fleece. It's hard to felt. My tension is still too high. It's a really good beginner fleece. It's hard to felt. You can't really mess it up. You can comb it. You can cart it. Um, I don't know. It's nice and grabby. It's easy to spin. If you want to learn how to spin long draw, I definitely recommend starting with the Romney. It's just an easy, easy, gentle giving. It's just giving. And the fact that it doesn't, the, the yarn doesn't pill and it's just lustrous, it's just pretty. I don't know. I could talk about Romney all day. So that's number one of five. It's Again, this is in no particular order. I don't want anyone to say, Tashi's favorite sheep is a Romney. You don't know that, you guys. You don't know me. Don't put me in that bag. Um... Number two, I love a CVM. I, I think my favorite breeds are those that straddle that fine medium spectrum. I don't like, I don't know. Maybe I need to try different fine fleeces, but like, ooh. The, I have a five pound Merino that I showed you guys in episode one of the podcast and it's just sitting there waiting to be processed because it is, it's terrifying me. But I can throw a CVM in a, I can be nice to it and wash it lock by lock, or I can also just throw it in a laundry bag and throw it in my bathtub and it'll get clean and it'll be fine. Um, I love a good CVM. Uh, the The colors in CVMs are great. I like that they're sometimes spotted so you can get multiple colors. I love the handle on a CVM. Like if you think Cormo and Merino and Polworth and all those fleeces are like squishy soft, you just gotta get your hands in a CVM and you get those really thick blocky locks. <sighs> telling you it just makes my heart sing heart sing love a cvm um three what is three uh, i love a quarry fleece i'm going through the fleeces that i have bought like when i made this list i was like what are the fleeces that you buy more than one of like what's the breed that you try and you love enough to buy again because for me that's a good indication that it is high up on the list is that if you tried it you loved it enough to try it again that's a pretty good indication that that's a breed that you want to stick with. And I have three Cory fleeces, which means 
Cory Dale and I are jamming. I love a good Cory fleece. Um, I like Cory fleece. The French fry, oh God, the French fry crimp in a Cory fleece. Cory Dale fleeces just have sick crimp. Um, and they're another like breed that I can throw on my carter and not have to worry about nets, but I can also like comb it. Corys tend to have great luster. They take dye well. They blend beautifully with other things. Like I don't have to worry about mix. Like I can throw Cory and Romney together and I think it will make a great yarn. I could blend it with yak. I could blend it with everything in a way that I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that with other sheep breeds. And this is just my own neurotic behavior. There's no like rhyme or reason to why I make these choices. This is just what I've learned through my own practice. I feel like Corys are very, very gentle and very giving in the land of like fine. I mean, Corys, I feel like people label Corys as medium. I should have done more research before I sat down and started talking about things. I'm pretty sure people label Corys as medium sheep. I think they are just as great as fine sheep. Um, but another sheep that I think the breed, the breed is resistant to felting. There we go. I got a, this, the pineapple in this, I will say the pineapple in this is definitely lending itself to slub. So I have to like pay a little bit more attention. So if I start rambling, it's because there's a bit of pineapple in here that's getting away from me and it's making me nervous. Um, love a good quarry i love that they're they don't felt well they wear well they knit well they just make really good squishy fabric my quarry stitches have great stitch definition they're just great they're just great and they come in ridiculous colors i have a black quarry Dale lamb one of these days actually i think that's one of my vlogmas plans anyway so to give you a tour of my flea stash and the way i've been planning on doing it is to just go through my fleece stash and pull out individual locks from each of them and put them in a ziploc bag and then we'll do a little bit of a fleece stash parade um so one of these days you'll see all the stuff that i've been hoarding but yeah now i love a good cory i have a black cory dale lamb that i'm just trying to figure out what to do i think i might comb some and card some because i have like three pounds of it so i can afford to just do a bunch of stuff with it so we'll see what happens so love a good cory uh four Oh God, this is a no brainer. I go nuts for Shetland. I mean, I feel like I, mm, God, this is a hot take. You guys, this is a hot take. I think Shetland might be my favorite sheep. I'm not sure how I feel about saying that out loud. Hot take, hot take, you guys, hot take. Um, I think Shetland might be my favorite sheep. I love a Shetland. There's something about these primitive breeds that do it for me. I mean, I think part of why I engage so much with spinning is it's a craft that the people who came before me would have also engaged in. Like, it's not something new. The way we do it might be new, but I love the fact that it's ancient and it's something that people have been doing forever. And then when you get down to a primitive sheep that is pretty much unimproved, that the people who came before us we're raising and taking care of. I I don't know. And I love the colors that Shetland come in. I love, I have, guys, I, I'm almost ashamed of admitting this. I have four Shetland fleeces in my stash. I have three lambs and I have one, one adult female. Um, they're just great and they have such good crimp now most people shetland can be double coated i find that the people who sell shetland for hand spinners won't sell us a double coated fleece because like whatever the the fibers that are sold for hand spinners should be different than the fibers that are taken to a mill and so i don't know if i've ever seen a shetland i skipped a peg i'm an absolute ninny i skipped a peg um i'm not sure the people who are selling shetland for hand spinners are going to sell a double coated fleece or maybe they will is that a thing has anyone ever seen a Shetland for hand spinners? Okay, let me know in the comments if you've made it this far and you've just been listening to me babble for the last 10 minutes. Let me know in the comments if you've ever seen a Shetland sold for hand... A Shetland sold for hand spinners that's double-coated because now I'm interested. Um, but all the Shetlands I've seen are like stupid fine, super soft, and they're... I don't know, they're just so pretty. And they're such little sheep. Like, they have the cutest faces. Oh, y'all, you know what I'm going to do? That'll be great. Uh, editing Tashi is going to find pictures of all these sheep and post pictures in the, in the pod. This is not a podcast in the vlogmas madness that we are doing of all the sheep that we're talking about. So you can see how stupid cute Shetlands are. Their fleeces tend to be on the smaller side because they're smaller animals because they're not like, you know, mass produced and bred to be huge like we did with improved sheep. So their fleeces tend to be on the smaller side and they're worth every penny. I think they're gorgeous. I have a dark gray a light gray. Um, 
Shetland come like the colors have names, but they're all really weird sounding words like Komojet and Goodmojet and strange words that I think are from Shetland and I I'm not gonna bother. So I have I have a dark gray, I have a light gray, I have a like a light fawn, almost sand colored Shetland, and then I have like a dark brown Shetland. And actually, Una's fleece is the fleece I'm going to be doing when I do my Shetland breed study. So if you think I talked about Shetland a, light, a lot today, wait till we do that breed study because all we're going to do is talk about Shetland, and I'm obsessed. Yeah, that's a hot take. Shetland's my favorite sheep breed. You can tell all your friends. You heard it here first. And I think to round out top five would probably be Jacob. For a lot of the same reasons that I love a good Shetland. I love Jacob because they're primitive. I think they're fun. I think Jacob just look wild with those horns. Like, you guys, again, editing Tashi will put pictures in of all the sheep so you can see. But, like, Jacob can have anywhere from, like, two to six horns. Like, a six-horn Jacob is bananas. I think they look stupid cool. I love their spots. I love their sheepy faces. There's this video I watch on Instagram of like Jacob just running and crossing a stream and I have it saved. So every time I have a bad day, I click on this video of some Jacob crossing the stream and it just makes my whole day better. It does not take much to make me happy, you guys. I, I think that's the point of this whole exchange is it doesn't take much to make me happy. Um, now I think Jacob are rad sheep. I have a lilac Jacob. So a lilac Jacob is a Jacob. So normally Jacob are black and white. And for some reason, there's this mutation that exists in the sheep. And because Jacob are not improved sheep, no one really knows why this happens because um, they're you know considered primitive, which I think, great. I would rather primitive sheep any day anyway. Um, and so there's some reason there's this mutation happens and it makes this taupey brown color. So I have a lilac Jacob lamb and then I have a normal Jacob lamb and it just makes great wool. Like it's a little bit toothy. I mean, you guys, I'm a, I'm a sucker for toothy fleeces. Like, whatever. It is what it is. Um, they're a little bit toothy. I don't like using words like coarse, but they're a little bit coarse, a little bit grabby. But they just make great yarn. And they make great garments. They're hard-wearing. I have a Jacob hat. I have zero regrets. Ooh, ooh this green is pretty. I have... This pineapple keeps getting away from me, though. I have zero regrets when I spin a Jacob. So, I think that's it, you guys. That is my top five um sheep breeds that i would love to spin from raw fleece forever and ever now i will keep trying other things the obviously the fleece library proves that i will keep trying other things but i feel like if i could only spin three sheep five that's not three five i feel like if i could only spin uh these five sheep breeds forever and ever i would be content i mean i know some people who like pig one and they stick to that one i don't know if i'm happy to do that because I like variety. What, what do they say? Variety is the spice of life. Is that the quote? Um, I like variety and I like being able to like pick and choose a few things. But if I had to, if I had to stick to these five, I would be content. That would be good enough for me. So I've just about made it through the first half of this this spin we're gonna call this video here since I'm not so I'm not babbling at you forever um, let me know in the comments what your plans are for what are we doing here we're fine let me know in the comments if you have any big plans for December I would love to know if you're doing an advent uh, spin or if you're doing like a mini skein advent from like those indie dyers I did a mini skein advent now my time just too low I did a mini skein advent one year, but I don't find any use for mini skeins of yarns. Whereas if I spin this all up into a big combo spin, I'll just have a bunch of yarn to use on a project. And I would rather spin yarn than just collect advent, I mean mini skeins anyway. But let me know if you're doing an advent. I have another advent besides this one. I'm doing the um, Kylie and the Machine. Here we go. There's more weird stuff in here the Kylie and the Machine uh, sewing tag advent. And I've been opening, the, I opened that this morning. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open my sewing tag advent. That's a 24 day one. And then on off days, spin something else. If I don't finish my ounce, spin the ounce and just hang out. So I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. Thank you for popping in for this first day of Vlogmas. I hope you come back. Uh, bring a cup of coffee, bring a cup. Oh, you know what you should bring? I mean, unless this is not your jam, but maybe a cup of hot cocoa with some like whipped cream and some marshmallows. Pop on your favorite holiday tune. I know Christmas carols aren't for everybody, but like pop on your favorite holiday tune. 
uh, pop on something that makes you feel good, get nice and cozy, and let's chat. I have a couple topics that I think might be really fun. A lot of them are geared towards like, y'all, I'm gonna tell you up front, I'm not a teacher. So do not come here expecting tip top content. But one of the days we're gonna talk about people who do teach, who will have tip top content for you. Um, and I will be pointing you in their direction. But I think, I don't know, I just think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun to sit and chit chat with you every other day while you do something that brings you joy. So that's it, you guys. Happy holidays. Happy Vlogmas. And I will see you guys the day after tomorrow.